get in the know. Non-stop Vikings talk. It's Purple Daily on Score North and scorenorth.com. You like that? You like that? Hey, you held him to 20 points, man. You gave us a chance at the end. But I got three words for you. You like that? Yeah! I want to mock. Mock! Yes, it's time for a midweek mock here on Purple Daily, Apple, Spotify, scorenorth.com, and the Purple Daily YouTube channel. We do mock draft Mondays, boys, but it's just not enough to contain it. There's too many mock drafts. It's floating coming around. up. It's mock draft season. April is around the corner. It's the around end of April. So we're, st- we're still two and a half months away. It's around the corner. It's around the corner. We get to rack up more mock drafts. Uh, so we're going to give you a very special, this is sort of a custom mock that I'm going to throw at you guys that I put together this morning. What? Thanks to the draftnetwork.com's mock draft machine. Oh, you've got a machine. a machine. They have a mock draft machine mm, all right. on the draftnetwork.com. Uh, but this midweek mock is presented by our friends at Whamatech. Whamatech has jumped on board here, supporting the cause at Purple Daily. So if you in the Twin Cities could support their cause, you would be supporting our cause. A little scratching of backs. And what's uh, their so cause? Speak. So their cause is, if you're watching us or listening to us, for instance, on a broken down phone, tablet, or laptop, it might be time to break down and get a new one. And you don't have to break the bank to get a new device because Whamatech is a trusted supplier of pre-owned phones, tablets, and laptops, and other new accessories. And they source those pre-owned devices directly, which passes the savings on to you guys. Whamatech.com for more information. That's W-A-M-A-T-E-K.com. Whamatech. 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 For all Wham. your needs. Boom. Uh, so, all right, let's let's dive into this. I want to mock. Mock. I'm throw this up on the old screen here. So, this in front of you here is a three round mock draft oh, from yeah. our friends at the Draft Network, and this is a custom simulation that includes trades. But the Vikings didn't make any trades in the automated simulation that I did. Okay, so I just want to throw that out there okay. because I don't think they did. I wish they did, but okay, yeah, that's fine. We can keep simulating at some point. I like to see a trade. I trade. like to see Rick make a trade. This is the mock draft machine. And it has, we'll go through some of the first round, then we'll get to the Vikings ones more specifically. But it's got Trevor Lawrence going to the Jaguars, Mm -hmm. Zach Wilson going to the Jets, Jamar Chase, wide receiver. The the top five picks are great. It's just straight pass game, right? Jamar Chase going to the Dolphins, Justin Fields to the Falcons, and then Devontae Smith going to the Bengals. So three quarterbacks and two star wide receivers in the first five picks, in case you're wondering where the league is at with passing games and the importance of them right now. Where are the cornerbacks? Where the DNs? Let's keep scrolling down. Where are the three jacks? Where's the left guard? Come on, my team's built on defense. And the Vikings need a left guard. Don't get me wrong, but Mm -hmm. all right. So the next five picks here. Oh, Kyle Pitts, I like a lot. Another pass game weapon here. That's Trask's guy. Yeah. So Kyle Pitts to the Eagles. You got Panay Sewell, the offensive tackle from Oregon to the Lions. You have to go eight picks in until the first defensive player comes off the board in this simulation, and it's Patrick Sertain. Uh, from to Alabama the, to the Panthers, who might not have that pick because they might have a different quarterback. By Ooh, they might have traded day. all of their future first round picks <laughs> for Deshaun Watson, yes, according sir. to that report that came out. You got another cornerback from Virginia Tech, Caleb Farley, going to the Broncos. George Payton, George Payton learned well That's for right. the Broncos. Just keep drafting cornerbacks, <laughs> George. Aren't we going to take a quarterback or a receiver or somebody else? No, my teams always take defense. And then uh, you, you see some of the other picks in front of you on YouTube. Uh, tr- just to summarize for the podcast audience, Trey Lance going 12th to the 49ers. So that's your fourth quarterback off the board. And then with the 14th overall pick, according to this mock draft machine simulation, the Vikings are set to take offensive lineman Elijah Vera Tucker from USC. And I'll read you the write-up if you just go deeper into the into the uh, the website. It says Elijah Vera Tucker has aligned predominantly at left tackle this season for USC. He has exceptional athleticism as evidenced by his balance and body control in pass set. Football. Oh. Oh, yeah. oh, he's an easy mover who demonstrates his athleticism in the passing game, particularly in his kick slide. Football. Wow. Kick slide's important. Very important. A kick slide like analysis a kick here. It's very important. He plays with good competitiveness when he is Bull rushed in the run game. He comes off the ball hard to strike and he excels by getting his body in favorable positions. He's played this year at left tackle, affording him much more value due to his ability to play 
that position in the pin. So he can play tackle or guard, and that seems to fit what the Vikings need because they don't. They might need a left tackle. They might need a left guard. Mm-hmm. Ezra Cleveland might move at some point. And so that becomes now the third mock draft that we've seen with Elijah Vera Tucker going to the Vikings. I think Kuiper and McShay are the other ones. So the running tally of first-round picks to this point are th- in the mocks that we've done on this show. Elijah Vera Tucker three times, Christian Barmore twice, the defensive lineman from Alabama, and then Jamar Chase, Quiddy Pay, Jeremiah, uh, JOK, linebacker from Notre Dame, Christian Darrisaw, offensive tackle from Virginia Tech, and uh, Jalen Phillips, the edge rusher from Miami. You guys want the I other want ones? Z- you know what, though? Hmm. Z- Zim is going to say at, at 14, Rick, you got to get me more defense. You got to get me more defense. Don't let your boy down. down. Don't down. let your boy down. And that's a good segue because with their two third round picks, according to the draftnetwork.com, the Vikings will take safety from Central Florida, Richie Grant, and interior defensive lineman from LSU, Tyler Shelvin. This seems to be the compromise all the time. All right, listen, Rick. Listen, Zim. Yeah. Or I guess it's Rick talking to Zim. Yeah. We're going to go offense, yeah, but, we then gonna, but then we're going to draft a ton of defensive players later. Stop, so. stop crying. Yep. I want a defense. So if the draft played out this way and they didn't move up back up into the second round, they just they just made their selections with these first three picks and they went meat and potatoes, offensive line at 14. They found a safety to replace Anthony Harris in the third round and then they went interior defensive lineman uh, with their other third round pick. How would you feel? You know, I feel okay. I I'm I am steadily um, becoming more troubled by one thing, and be, because I think the, the assumption is within the first three rounds for sure that the Vikings are going to take a safety. Okay, and I keep asking myself, if you've got Smith still, which I think that you will, if you've got Hitman Harry back there, can you not find a safety like on the market? Can you not? I that just seems to me to be a position at which if you've got an outstanding one, I'm not saying that you don't need a good one, but I don't know that you need to use a high draft pick there, depending on what your goals are. I feel like there's other positions of need that are harder to fill and find and more important than safety. I'm I'm, yeah. I'm slowly but surely becoming a little bit more troubled by this notion that, oh, they have to take a safety high. I would argue that you actually don't. Yeah, and especially when you have Harrison Smith, like you said. Yeah. You can it it gives you the luxury of having someone that you can sort of develop. And look at I mean, Anthony Harris was was he a seventh round pick? No. Or undrafted, undrafted free agent. Undrafted That's the thing, yes. Yeah. And and obviously, you know, not every undrafted player you can just plug into Zimmer's ecosystem and he turns into you know what Anthony Harris was a couple of years ago. But I think Zimmer has proven that you can take guys sort of off the streets or in the seventh round. And so I'm kind of with you on that one. If if they if they feel like Richie Grant in this particular case is man, we had that guy as a first round grade and he slipped to the third round. All right, well, you know, pull the trigger, best player available. Um, but in terms of like you have limited resources to make your team better, and really you have limited resources, like we talked about yesterday with Courtney, to take a seven and nine team and turn it into a Super Bowl contender. And I just don't know that your second highest draft pick needs to be a safety. I, yeah. I don't know that exactly. I have this. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, all right. That's your midweek mock draft update here. I want a mock. Mock. On Mackie and Joe. We're going to keep doing mock draft Mondays. And actually, uh, you guys are going to talk to Daniel Jeremiah, noted I, mocker. And he had a very Friday interesting show. mock Ooh, yesterday. Yeah. Very intriguing. Something that I think. Might be hard to pass on if it's available. I agree. I fully agree. I think it would be awfully fun. As I noted on Score North Instagram last night in the Ask Mackie Anything, someone said, what would you draft in the first round? And I just showed them a very famous poster from the late 1990s. I was going to say, did it involve three guys? Did it involve three three threats on a football field? Uh, How's that novel you've been working on? Uh, (laughs) What am I to say that? Were their, name, were their names? Were their names? Become enemies, and enemies become friends. Moss and Carter and Reed. <laughs> Hello, go rap. Just enough to down the field in the same. <laughs> All right, that's a wrap on this episode. Don't take a safety, Daily. though. Mackie, not second round. Judd, Declan, and uh, we're gonna add. We've we got some ideas to add some things to Purple Daily here, including a little. It sounds like Declan's gonna fire up some Sunday night vent line, mm-hmm. and uh, we also. 
We've had a great time reading through the YouTube comment sections just on our own, and we're going to bring some of those comments to the surface and answer your questions and your jabs, I think, on Thursday's show is going forward. We're going to make that a regular part of Purple Daily. TV. Jabs? What, what, what jabs? Someone said you look like Marv from Home Alone. Yeah. I actually didn't mind that. The Wet Bandits. That might be true. Declan Little Spoon Goff. That was also <laughs> one. I like that, too. Hilarious. You know what? It's okay. I, I can take it. I can handle it. Yeah. Well, we'll bring those Home to the show. Too. Home Alone. All right, that's your midweek mock draft update here on Purple Daily. See you guys.